When last we heard from Abraham's wife, Sarah, she was caught laughing at the idea that she would bear a son in her old age. Now we find that her laughter is destiny. But we also find that the woman whose son's name means laughter also had a steely edge to her temper. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Tuesday, October 11th, 2022. Sometime after Abraham and Sarah received a visit from three mysterious figures, one of whom promises that Sarah will bear a son, Sarah does indeed conceive and bear a son. Sarah finds this to be another laughing matter, but this time laughter of joy rather than laughter of incredulity or unbelief. She says, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. Appropriately enough, Abraham names the child Isaac, Yitzhak in Hebrew, which means he laughs. Given this great piece of good news, this great gift of God, you would think Sarah would trust that God would have the boy's welfare in mind. Instead, we read another dark story about Sarah and the maid she had driven Abraham to conceive a child with. Now the child of that union is in the picture, and the two sons of Abraham become playmates in the camp, much to Sarah's displeasure. The child grew and was weaned, that is, Isaac, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. It's an ugly story. Sarah finds the child Ishmael, the son of her servant Hagar, whose union with Abraham, after all, was Sarah's idea to be a direct threat to her son, Isaac. Sarah insists that Abraham cast Hagar and Ishmael out, throwing them to the proverbial curb. To his credit, Abraham finds this distressing. But God intervenes to let him know that God would take care of this, his firstborn child. Interestingly enough, Ishmael's name is never mentioned in this story. We only know it from an earlier story. The rest of the story here is that Hagar takes her child into the wilderness where she laments that he will surely die of exposure. And yet God intervenes with her to assure her that her son, like Isaac, will become the ancestor of a great nation. The only difference is that the nation produced through Ishmael is not the nation through whom God's covenant promises will play out. Still, it is the apparent cruelty of Sarah that captures my imagination here. Can she not trust God's providential care for her son Isaac? Is Ishmael's simple presence such a threat that she insists on condemning Hagar and Ishmael to what should have been certain death but for God's gracious intervention? What is the lesson here? Seems to me there are two lessons. First, God's mercy and grace do not depend on the sterling character of God's people. As it turns out, God can and does work through the unlikeliest of people, sometimes people who are mean, sometimes people like Sarah, sometimes people like us. And that's good news for us. Second, 
God's concern extends beyond the bounds of God's chosen people. We tend to think that God only cares about God's chosen. Not so. God cares even about those outside the covenant community. Indeed, it is important always to remember that God chose a people and engrafted us into that people for the express purpose of being a blessing to all people. God's care for Hagar and Ishmael should be a reminder of that very thing. Tomorrow, Isaac takes a wife, but for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.